All right. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, to what is game number three, our final game of the Summit 7 European Qualifiers, at least for remain. today. And we got Alliance versus Mouse Sports. Right now, this is it. Not an elimination match necessarily, Radiant but team. the winner, of course, moving forward to play, face Na'Vi, and the loser will play Empire Alliance in this double elimination four-team playoff stage. One team going to that $100,000 Summit 7 land. We got the draft well underway as I'm breaking CPK to him by Z Rock once again. And interesting starts. We got an IO Clockwork on the side of Alliance. LC Phoenix into Life Stealer now. Yeah, I don't want to sit. Like, I hope Mouse took a minute and reset a little bit. They have snap picked everything in this draft so far. There has been no hesitation. They've known what they wanted to pick. And whether that's the sign of a coherent plan they want to run or a certain uh, set piece, that's fine. But pick. hopefully that's the motivation behind it. Alliance's draft, though, very interesting. Um, so far, no real synergy with the Wisp. And Dazzle, uh, again, not the most offensive of heroes. We saw last game, they were really hinged on just empower Loda, pray for a good RP. And that was the game plan literally for the first, like, 30 minutes yeah. until it was over. And uh, without the mag, I'm curious to see how that same style of strategy is going to work out for them. Well, Axe is still there. <laughs> I want to go for that, but no, they got the <laughs> clockwork. Probably. Yeah, and Ember's still in the pool. Um, trying to just think of other, like, signature heroes left in here. There aren't that many great wisp pairings right now there's no snap first thing that comes to mind when i see a wisp this is going with it it used to be tiny uh really has fallen entirely off the meta and well, i mean banned out here too i was gonna but. say yeah they even banned the tiny just in case i mean huh. alliance has done that yeah I'm curious if they're going to pick up another delivery method on mouse ports. I think you're fine. Like, you have Phoenix died before the Legion Blink. And then once you have Legion Blink, Legion is about as good as it gets right now. So, lots of ways to get Lifestealer into fights. Now they need some tempo control, some team fight. Um, I hope they don't realize Warlock has not picked or banned yet and go that way. Because I think it would be really bad for them this game. The only upshot would be if Phoenix dives in like a like, you know, crazy person. And then they just egg on uh, chaotic offering on top of the egg, while everyone's trying to beat on it. That could be okay, but their lanes would just be awful. You'd have no roamer, no stuns. What do I want if I'm mouse here? You need a roamer, but what? Like, Ricky's gone, Bounty's gone. I guess there's Earth Spirit. There's. I mean, really Disruptor? like the premium ones. Against the, yeah. the okay, so they're gonna have very low CC on Mouse's side. The, this Phoenix is a pressure based uh, support, like, he wants to just be pushing waves and throwing fire spirits on stuff to slow their attack speed. Same with Coddle with Illuminate. So, not gonna have a ton of uh, necessarily like roaming presence. They won't have a lot of map presence on Mouse's side, so that could be remaining. Alliance's chance to find an opening here. You just pick something very fast-paced that moves around the map a lot. But their supports are already kind of committed to not being that way either. You've got Wisp Dazzle. They're not going to be ganking anybody. This is going to be a weird, weird game. Well, it's game three, and it's been an entertaining series so far, so we don't expect anything less. Like, at least Alliance can run the clockwork around. Like, get Tranquils, get a Windlace, go run around. We got a TA, cool. I like it. Yeah, so far, actually, the refraction breaks are terrible. Like, it's just Phoenix. Yeah. Hmm. So if you're Mouse, you got a mid lane slot open. Ten seconds remaining. THD? <laughs> Five <laughs> seconds remaining. That's Shakiro, though. Oh, yeah, right, it's been... Uh, I love how you have to, like, that. think... Oh, wait, Reserve what's time. THD again? Uh, yeah, and I need to stop saying that. But... Oh, in reality, you don't need your mid to be the strongest carry on the side of Mouse. You've got a life stealer, you've got a legion, you've got some scaling damage. Uh, remaining. Could be like a Veno that Alliance would just destroy the TA. And it's slightly more viable than Jakiro. Yeah. 
I'm tr if you're alliance aside here, are you looking for another pairing with the Wisp? Or, or is just Ten TA enough? Remaining. Did you just want Wisp to have Wisp? Like that, that's always the question. Five seconds remaining. Uh, so defend that they, with a Dazzle, that's like... Yeah, so they could be looking PA again. Still pretty good into this lineup. Uh, Coddle's Blinding Light is a, a huge problem for PA. But other than that, not the hardest game for one. Like, Slark is okay. I don't want to see Juggernaut here. I, I don't think it's good. Well, they're thinking about their final ban. Obviously, Troll was taken away from Mouse. Could have been an option there for sure. I mean, Ursa's always one that comes to mind whenever I see a Wisp as well. Could be. Very good at killing the Phoenix Egg. Not bad at manning up into the Life Stealer. Risky to duel, because if he presses R before the duel, it's just a disaster. If he gets yeah. the Enrage off and has the damage reduction, doing extra damage. And it's going to be hard for Legion to find dual wins this game. Between Shallow Grave and Relocate, it's going to be a nightmare. What about like a Clinx? Like more of a... I was wondering that. For, for Alliance here, yeah. yeah. <sighs> I just don't know if it does enough. Clinks is so one-dimensional, and generally you want them in a situation where you're going to be shoving powers early. And I don't feel like Alliance's draft is very well suited for that. Ten um, seconds remaining. You don't have enough stuns to really like take team fights. So if Mouse wants to fight Five you at a tower, remaining. it's going to be really hard to not just back up and give it up. Like, oh, we can't fight. Run away. I could go like him. He's actually still on the board. We could. I mean, actually, the more I think about it, Clinks wouldn't be terrible if you can get to the mid game. Because I, I don't see a pick that fixes the team fight problem here for Alliance. The, their team fight is so much worse than Mouse's. Yeah. Is there a one position that really yeah, exactly kind of fixes that? So, like, the, the, there's, the fact that they went double really defensive supports is what's making I, me. Actually, I really like Sven here. I really like Sven. Okay. That's not quite Sven, but it's close. Jeez. Uh, Mouse had an idea. <laughs> yep. They knew what they wanted. Um, no, I really like this fun and the fact that it gave you the extra stun. That was the biggest thing. So they do get that out of having load on Wraith King. Yeah. Um, you don't get the big cleave, which is a bit sad, but I don't think you're cleaving too much of Mouse's lineup at once. So uh, I like this idea. It gives them a little more control. I still don't think they're in good shape in team fights, though. Like, all right, so Wraith King falls for the first life because he's probably going to be the guy in front. And then you want to be killing things during the reincarnate when it's slowing everyone. And their only damage is TA. So unless Limp pops off in this game and is just like three shotting people, uh, this game looks a little harder to come back from than the first one. Mm -hmm. So we saw this huge lead Mouse had in game two and kind of pitched it away. Well, we're going to see which of these two teams comes out on top of what is, again, our third and final game. So, yeah, you are right, though. I mean, Mal's, with the way that finished, you may have thought that was just domination by Alliance, but they definitely had a lead earlier on in that game, too, after winning the first game. But is that a sign of shifting momentum, perhaps, or is that maybe just a hiccup and Mal's looking to regain control right here? But death I mean, it, it was still – there is no other way to word that. That is absolutely emotional instability Prepare coming out in, like – their decision making ever since that form NRP. And either way, whether it's good or bad emotions right now on the side of Mouse, they're gonna come in hot this game. Yeah. They they're gonna be ready to take this game three. They're I, I imagine they're gonna be very aggressive and kind of live or die on that. Ooh, this is interesting here. Phoenix. Actually gonna stay inside the smoke. Alliance has a team all for Look them. Look at that thing right on where the ward is. I get it. No, maybe next time as the sentries, but uh, yeah, Spartan pinged like almost on top of it. <laughs> well, maybe they were guessing. Okay, yeah. Oh, well, he missed. Yeah, wrong. he didn't trust his didn't trust his captain. <laughs> He's like, nah, trust me, it's over here. Seconds to Whoops. And now the smoke coming in from Alliance, the, the later one. Wow. Oh, he missed it with the second sentry. I didn't realize he'd already put the first one down. Yeah. That's so sad. And neither of those are where Spartan pinged. <laughs> like, he, he literally pinged, like, 
maybe 200 range above the ward, like straight north of it. Huh. And Mal's has four here are going to play defensive. They say it's not worth it. They do not the like level our level one. Is, level one's awkward from both teams. It's like Phoenix is so squishy. Coddle is so squishy at level one. What is going but on? If they're here? in back, it'd be good. Uh, so Elsie's bottom with Coddle. So are they? They're expecting this trial in then. That's the only reason why they would it do this. Looks like it. I mean, so so it's the right move, right? Like this is good. But will it work? I, gonna happen. This is weird. I, I honestly couldn't tell you. Like, they're going to have good damage out of Skylark and Coddle uh, on Spartan here. Just to keep the waves off the tower. But it is going to cost Skylark a lot in farm. And you're giving Jonas and Fan a pretty easy level 6. Madara is going to farm, that's for sure. But there's not really a risk of clock dying up here. I mean, this is kind of what I said in draft, but this game's just going to be weird. There's no stuns on, like, the tri lane of Mao's if they were going to tri lane. There's only the Wraith Fire Blast on Alliance, and they're going to use it right here on Skylark. They go aggressive, but again, he has a Dazzle and a Wisp with him, so not really the most aggressive supports themselves. Dyer's top He's kind of enhancing top himself, top. but that's how it's going to be. So, yeah, it continues to kind of just be a... Awkward feeling laning phase. Yeah. The two I, teams. In reality, no one should die on either team. It just shouldn't happen. You don't have like two or three stuns that if you're slightly out of position, you're super punished for it. So the only lane that maybe has kill potential would be this bot tri lane from Alliance once Hanskin gets a point in poison touch. But even then... So, so, well, let, let's go back to this this Death Prophet, though. We really haven't addressed this too much yet. Mm. Why? <laughs> Why the Death Prophet? I, I mean, it was a snap pick, just a niche comfort. Was, they had no building hitters, and that's one of the better building hitters that was left in the pool as a mid laner. So, just thinking about their ways to win the game, I guess. And Exorcism is what they decided is the best route. Like, we're, we're in a patch where you have to have somebody that can kill a building or you just can't win the game. Well, he's going to run into the Wisp TA now. As Wisp is making his way over to bottle up the Hastron here. And he'll do so. Pops it right away. He's going to head right Oops. back to the bottom, actually. Is there his action down here? No. Not really. They're on opposite sides of each other hitting creeps. <laughs> That's how it's going to be. Well, they're going for a play here now. Oh, that's a big that's heal a right big on top. Heal. Great placement. Only level no one, but still though. doing plenty. But yeah, it's not enough. Goes back to the lack of CC. Now EGM's Ooh. in an awkward spot with the tether. But if you don't have a stun out. to stop him from moving anywhere, it doesn't do anything. Exactly. It just tethers away into safety. Uh, so I was talking to Tsunami, actually, about this earlier today. Um, Death Prophet's been getting picked up more a lot in Southeast Asia and China. And I still don't think it's necessarily a great hero. He used to be nuts because Spirit Siphon was one of the most busted abilities in Dota. But now that that's toned down to being reasonable, he doesn't crush every lane anymore. And I hate that your only tower pushing ability on him is Exorcism, and your only teamfight ability is really Exorcism. And it's on a two and a half minute cooldown at all levels. Like, yeah. It's just, it's very risky. I've always. I've kind of been a fan at the, with like on the other side of the spectrum of Death Prophet as far as the skill set, maybe being underrated of swords because in Spirit Siphon, yeah, I got toned down. It's still a solid ability, but the silence I think is so strong. Like the radius of, of the silence and how long it lasts, up to six seconds. Look at Alliance's roster. Does anything about that lineup care if it gets silenced? Other than like, maybe Dazzle, Dazzle yeah. is the only one. No, you are right though. Okay. He does not care. Wisp. I mean, especially if they're on the offensive, doesn't care once he's got a tether up. Wraith King already queued, so that doesn't matter. Clock's got battery assault already running. It just doesn't seem like a, a lineup where I think, oh, silence is really good here. Yeah. No, you're right. It's... Now this top lane. Okay, Jonas and Finn just TPing out right away. He <laughs> screwed not? up, tried to cogs for the mana burn on Madara, accidentally put himself inside the box with Madara, and not the best spot. It's a big, angry life sealer. 
You're right, though. This is definitely a game where we're not going to have much action early on. Talk about a change of pace. We already had, like, ten kills by now last game, yeah. I feel like. I, I know Maus wants to be to be going. They're going early phase boots on this life stealer, but just don't have the tools. Without stuns, it's so hard to find early game fights. Well, Loda, he's having free farm himself, 29 and 10 down here. I was wondering if we're going to maybe see something like the Hannah Midas on Loda early on, but he's going to at least the power treads right now. Yeah, I wouldn't have been. I still won't be surprised to see a Midas. I, I think it'll be like Midas Radiance point. Yeah. Maybe Midas Radiance. <laughs> I've seen the sun ray, just how slow it moves. The Jonas fan just kind of going left and right with it, <laughs> trying to avoid it. Trying to avoid that burn there. Death Prophet's currently back at base, but TPing back into the middle. And he's good to go again. So TA making a little bit of room there, and actually more so getting further ahead, even. God, yeah, he is dominating this middle matchup, actually. Mm hmm. And I haven't, like, I don't know if Thug's not super comfortable with this or what, but just run up in Spirit Siphon every time Link, or Limp has Refraction on. Yeah. You shred the charges. It's a nice way to keep yourself sustained. It's You're still going to be down a little in CS, but shouldn't have ever had to go back to Fountain to heal. It's finally a kill, by the and way. He already burned his shrine. Skylark maybe. bottom lane. Oh, yeah, he's, he's cutting fine. through the trees. He's still going. He's so dead. <laughs> line of sight. There we go. Race Fire Blast now connects, and Walk there off. we go. Jeez. First blood. Took a while, ah. but we get it. Three Wraith Fire Blasts later, they finally get a kill. <laughs> so yeah, the support coming in a little bit too late, and good chase down there. And Dazzle, I mean, he's level four now. Well, what's the support going to do? Look at him funny, throwing Illuminate at the full HP Loda? Yeah. <laughs> There's no turn potential with either of these supports. Like, TPing them in after someone's gone on does absolutely nothing. Phantom Assassin, with this start especially, is this a Blink Assassin. Dagger first or a Desolator? Uh, are we talking TA? In the... TA, yeah. Okay. Um, Blightstone Blink, probably. Okay. It's. It depends on how they want to play it. Like, if they're going to say we just need to use Clockwork for hook shots, and then we need TA to follow, it almost has to be Blink so you can catch up to the range of hook shot. Um, but if they just want to siege towers, then Deso first is obviously better. And you've got clock six coming up soon, so I think that decision will have to get made shortly. Uh, curious to see where the first hookshot goes, because that's kind of the first kill potential for Alliance outside of that mistake in the bot lane. So we kind of have, it's almost like a two for one for Alliance favor, where Wraith King and Life Stealer are both essentially free farming, but then the middle matchup is obviously being won by TA, so that's where they have the advantage right now, big time. With how well he's yeah, doing compared to the Death Prophet. Counteracted slightly by the amount LC is getting out of all this. Like, Skylark is quite a ways ahead of the Clockwork. So. <laughs> Maybe next time. You see his life right there. That was two hits from full from the TA. Legion Commander, meanwhile, he's caught in the cogs and the battery assault. This is going to be another kill. Jonas Fan runs him down. Now he's like, hey, Spartan, you're still here too. Might as well get you killed. That, that was a misplay by Spartan, man. He, there was no reason oh, for, for sure. him to be that close. Absolutely. And, I mean, that's what they needed on Alliance's side. You got hookshot up, you got some kills. That's their entire initiation, really. And uh, very, very good use of it. So it seems like a little bit of hangover from the last game. We're Mouse Sports and Alliance again capitalizing. You see the rotations coming out on their part. Clockwork to the bottom lane now. Wraith King to the top. He does have the uh, the reincarnate, worst case. Yep. Midas in the quick by now. All right. So Wraith King is one of the heroes that got hurt when they changed to the talent system and made it so you don't get attribute points anymore. Because a lot of Wraith Kings would just leave Wraith Fire Blast at level one. All you get is a little more damage out of it. It's not a great thing. You'd rather have six stats. So they just level it at one and then stop. But now that you don't have the choice but to put points in your skills, everyone's kind of reevaluating. Like, oh, is the early damage worth it since I'm going to have to take it anyway from uh, 11 to, or, well, now 13 to whatever, 17. So, yeah, it's, it's curious to see people putting in two points, three points, and then stopping. And uh, it's always interesting to watch what players decide to do. Yeah. 
Oh, what do uh, Wraith King's talents do? I haven't seen one yet, I don't think at all in 7.0. Jonas doesn't have a TP currently this time, and we've seen him do it before, but the hook shot back to the creep wave will allow him to get away. I was wondering why he just wasn't TPing like he has before. Happened to not have it in that case, but again, he still gets away, so he's fine there. Uh, you go back to Wraith King, though, you mentioned the talent oh, trees. Oh, you're fine. Yeah, was, I'm just always curious to see what some of these lesser picked heroes are. Um, at level 10, I would imagine it's going to be damage. The 15's a toss up. Great fire blast, maybe. Oh, wow. They got the kill on the Phoenix, by the way, as Clockwork got pretty low, but Wisp joining the party and TA hasted on over. It's a zero armor Phoenix. You just, you can't even be in Limp's general vicinity or you're gonna die. Right now, he's doing pure damage to you with Refraction Up, that's 200 to hit. So, four autos kills you from full. Top lane, duel on a Wraith King. And he has reincarnated Shallow Grave nearby as well from Hoskin. Nice blind light push for it, though, out of range. And they will secure that kill. Pop the reincarnate. But Wraith King pops back up. Hanskin, he can't really get the position to help him out here. So well played by Coddle initially. Can they finish off load in the end, though? He ports back to the tower. The Crypt Storm's not enough damage. He flies a Shallow Grave just in case. And Loda's just going to keep on running. Hanskin, like, take me instead. Overwhelming Oz hits, though. Gets the kill to Loda. And now Hanskin is in a lot of trouble. They do have Clockwork nearby, but... He too is by himself, and last thing you want to do is go in without anyone else. I mean, he's a man. Who knows? No, it really shouldn't. Um, I thought the reincarnate slow was actually going to save Dazzle and the Wraith King there. I mean, it, they all went for Dazzle, but they were moving so slow that they were out of position when Wraith King respawns. But the AOE catches them on the back end. Courier actually scouted Clockwork there, and he almost killed the Courier as a result, but. Now the Radiant side, they know he's he's nearby. TP's coming in. I mean, this is all five. This is still kind of scary if you're Alliance to jump into it. Yeah, Jonas Fan just going to try to be a distraction, if anything. Oh, he's definitely a distraction now. He got what he wanted. We're going to go on in. There's a relocate in the back line, so with TA and the Wisp. Exorcism has been popped, though. Wraith Fire Blast to lock down the Legion Commander. They want him dead, damn it. They do kill the Wisp, but so does LC go down. So one for one trade. He's an eye for an eye right there. Limp. Focusing on Madara now, trying to keep out of range of that exorcism. That's up from Thug once again. Still got a fair amount of dirt ratio left on that, I'm sure. A little under half left. Dazzle. He's going to pop the shallow grave. Might as well stand his ground at that point. Limp still nearby. Madara has to be careful, although he has the armlet toggle still. Do you be able to use Siphon? On to Limp. No shallow grave now from Hanskin. And Limp has to keep on running. Meanwhile, Phoenix gets picked off by Loda in the back lines. And now Phoenix, or excuse me, Loda's here and takes that life stealer. And now Thug, the exorcism overstayed. is off, and he will go down too. Yeah, it seems like they were overstaying the welcome quite a bit. They got what they wanted nice. and uh, nice. stuck around way too long. Exorcism was up for a while in that, and it kept the Alliance back. But as soon as the exorcism was done, Alliance just pounced. That was three kills off the back of exorcism completing exactly what they needed at this Illusion. point. Radiant structures are fortified. Four and Lotus turn. got the Midas rolling now. Tower. Yep, another thousand gold almost saved up. Templar Assassin obviously went that Blink Dagger first. The Blightstone Blink Dagger is mentioned. And now the Desolator coming, and a nice little stack for him to do here as well to help get towards that. So Mal's making a point to play aggressive at the top lane again. Madara, he's working on his own Desolator, but that's going to be a little ways off now. After Man, I hope we see level 25 in this game because Wraith King's uh, 25 talent at 20% are lifesteal. If him and TA are big enough and Legion tries to duel one of them, you, no one should die. Like, they should let life steal so much. Mm -hmm. top tower is under attack. Now, there is, Dyer's actually, with that interaction, um, unless we have a fight breakout, we're very likely may. Unless if Fanny's looking for the hookshot target, who does he want to get? If anybody, you'll get Got the him. LC. That's a good target. Press the attack comes out, but they're going to catch LC. Very possibly. No, he's actually going to be able to escape out. In fact, Madara Life Stealer going back in. Phoenix, hit Chris Dive. You see Multi in the back with the Supernova, but Loda, Shallow Graves applied. He's still running, though. He's having some trouble. A good kite coming out here from Thug. Using that Spirit Siphon, the Crypt Storm, not enough damage. So I, with that tether, keeps him alive. TA going backwards as well. Loda still going back into the trees here, just simply retreating this whole time. It's, this is deja vu, man. This is kind of what happened before. And now Alliance is pushing out at Mouse Ports. Yeah. Phoenix gets picked. Just, oh, Life Stealer, he's in trouble. 
Oh, the arm leg toggles again to keep him alive. But as you mentioned, they did not have exorcism that fight, which is kind of key. It came up on the very back end of it, and they were definitely unhealthy, but they're going to look to re-engage if Alliance stays. The scan should let them know they're at the shrine. Alliance should take their retreat. Be happy they found one. EGM came up huge in that fight, though. Stayed out of all the AoE damage, was tethering people and just earning himself. He had a whole bunch of earn charges saved up and basically full healed the Wraith King and about half a heal on TA in that duration of that fight. Yeah, it was, it was pretty, it was something. I mean, Mouseports was doing a lot of damage in that fight, but Alliance obviously was sustaining and staying alive and goes back to both IO and Dazzle and how they pick these very defensive Dyer's supports, but that means fallen. that uh, if you're Mal's, you, you got to keep that in mind as you're trying to really push into a fight. That kind of goes back to the earlier one where they committed way too deep because they kept saying, oh my god, they're so low, we need to get these kills, and all of a sudden you're being turned on. Yeah, that's why they want to be taking these fights at towers that are still standing. So if you're pushing Alliance back with that exorcism, you're doing something productive Dyer's with that timer. Have the spirits hit buildings and uh, get some extra power pressure. When you're taking fights like that where the T1's already dead, uh, you're not gaining anything out of your very, very long cooldown on Death Prophet. Well, there's an exorcism. They want to use this cooldown to take out Roshan, but obviously it's been spotted by Alliance. They're not going to give this up easy. Back there, just charging in. Wraith King reincarnates ready. And if they'd stayed on that, it could have been really bad for Mouse. Clock has an in this room. Uh, I it's going to head back bottom lane farm down there oh yeah so going back to wraith king so the reincarnate you know against him the idea of a mana burn now they do have mana leak of keeper of the light so and actually i have seen the the no mana ultimate be picked up in the talent tree i know you're mentioning the 20 percent vampire guard lifesteal which is good but there are cases you know matchups specifically as we're going to see another initiation speaking of the coddle we're just never allowed to finish this conversation no I'm just going to keep going. But they're, they're going to transition into Roshan. However, again, this isn't over just yet because Mouse, it, they do not want to give this up freely. Yeah, but Exorcism's down. You used it to try to take this yourself. It, you can't take this fight if you're Mouse. Skylark wants to, and he he went a little too far. Press the attack. They'll save him initially. Isle's going in with Clockwork, actually, just if anything, zone in the out, and that's an Aegis now for Limp picked up. They're going to keep them away. Radiant's middle tower oh. has been denied. Nice middle of the night tower, at least. But so yeah, the point is, it, it's possible. But uh, is is mana leak really something that Wraith King is overly concerned about? I mean, it's obnoxious for sure. But you're better off just probably waiting till you have a BKB, and by then, I mean you'll be BKB long before you'll have 25. So you can always just BKB off the mana leak. Uh, I don't think it's worth going the no mana cost for it. No one on the the mouse squad side is going into Fusel. No one's going to go in Necrobook. So, yeah, I absolutely think Vamp are this game for sure. Do it with flair. Yeah, that's if we get to level 25, but true. he's level 12 right now, so that's a ways to go. But Limp, he's, he's not having troubles. He's 16. He's way ahead of everyone. Yeah, his CS reflects that too. He's up like 47 CS, almost 50. Wow, yeah. He is, uh, he is up there and going to push the top tower by himself even, so with some more objectives. He's building his own BKB, speaking of that. And bottom lane, Malz is setting up to push it with an exorcism ready to go. Ghost Scepter, by the way, picked up by Death Prophet to go with the Yield Scepter. I was Scepter. just going to say that. DP has her immunity item. Oh, Phoenix got found. Oh. It's a Wraith Fire Blast right there. So yeah, very, uh, as you said, immunity, the Yules into the Ghost Scepter. To allow the Exorcism to do damage while she's staying alive throughout. Is that, uh, do you think they're good pickups then? Oh, that, I mean, you needed this game. All of the damage on Alliance is physical. The Shadow, or Shadow Wave from Dazzle, both of their cores. The only thing you have to worry about is Battery Assault. And, uh, I, yeah, I love the pickup here. It's just a question of if it's enough. And... I would not be surprised to see Limp go uh, defusal himself after seeing that Ghost Scepter picked up. Yeah. Radiant I just gotta find a way to purge it. If, if you ever get DP, she can position herself so far ahead when she has a Ghost Scepter. Be the frontliner, and if you ever go on her, she just goes. Mm -hmm. So I, I definitely think he's gonna Radiant's need one. And he's the only top. real person that can buy it on this team. Yeah, you're not really liking to. You're not gonna be seeing that on Wraith King. And 
Great thing, by the way, the armlet, of course, but yeah, the blade mail now picked up to go along it's, with that. It's hell to play Death Prophet into blade mills because you can't really control the exorcism. Um, and yeah, it's just a ton of damage reflected. Just going to continue to farm out the jungle here at the bottom lane. Meanwhile, Mal's had seem a little lost as far as what they want to do. The, the exorcism's been on cooldown, or off cooldown, I should say, for a fair amount of time, it feels like. Um, They're just struggling to find a way in. The Aegis is still up, so they don't want to just run in and pop uh, pop Exorcism only to have Limp eat it all with the Aegis. He does have an Arcane Rune active, and that's like a prime time to use it, of course, so might find something down here at the bottom lane, but Initiation on LC, Infest Bomb is on top of it, but look at that, he blocks them in with the Cogs. And maybe next time, actually, does go down on the Phoenix in the back lines, but Wisp, he's going to end up falling too. Ended up going pretty deep right there, but now the chase is on. Loda, he's going for the Yules to prevent that Wraithfire Blast, but will it be now if the Blade Mail's up and you just see Death Prophet ticking down? No doubt the Blade Mail doing plenty, and then Limp ends up finishing the job himself. And now the tower. Yeah, Alliance just in a command position. We're only 20 minutes in this game, and it's 12,000 that way. Coddle at least going to delay it. As he's pulling back the creep wave. Unfortunately, that means he's going to delay to his death, though. Yeah, I, I explicitly pointed out in draft, Limp needs to pop off in this game to make it uh, proactive for Alliance. And if you look at the net worth, I mean, I think it's pretty safe to say that's exactly what he's doing. Yeah, no, he's, he's having a hell of a game. And Phoenix, he just simply was trying to counter ward, which he got, actually, to be fair. But <laughs> worth. So worth it. Got that hunter gold. Dies in the process, though. And now back to that bottom tower. This time, no backdoor protection. They should be able to drop it pretty quickly. Clockwork's going to sit on this haste and uh, finally pick it up, though. And TA's BKB, it's coming back up. Just 20 seconds. Probably not looking to push high ground. Yeah, it's going to be satisfied with a tier two. I really Street. don't want to see the blood thorn on limp right now i think the fusel would be way better like, what are you blood thorning uh, you already two shot the coddle in phoenix that's a non-melded hit on <laughs> phoenix right there half-life one hit ouch yeah yeah it's phantom assassin last assassin. game now the templar assassin this game are they related what's the lore your dota has great lore that's that's not a me question I that's couldn't a, even tell you, like, one of the character bios ever. Um, Sir Action Slacks really. question. Slacks, yep. Slacks knows all of them. Gotta watch his videos. Anyways, they both do a lot of damage, I know that. And they have assassins in their title, so. Gotta be surprised. Yes, they do. Jonas and Finn, by the way, if we didn't notice it in last fight, got the hook onto Skylark and instantly realized Life Stealer was inside. So just threw the cogs up and force stabbed the way. Beautifully done to not overcommit, and now they're gonna find Skylark without the life stealer. Yeah. Yep. Just uh, just kind of stands there, accepts death at that point. It's good hunting by Jonas and Fan, who's no doubt had a hell of a game himself. He's being that initiator. He too now has his own blade mail. He went the four staff first, but no blade mail pickup, which you already stressed how great that is against the exorcism. Of Death Prophet, who it goes back to, you know, other than that first Death Prophet ulti, which it was decent in the top lane there as they were going back and forth. Obviously, they overextended in the end. But, you know, it's overall useful for that fight. Since then, it's only been used once, and it wasn't even, he died right after. Twice. You did it to Rush Pit, too, and it didn't do that. It. Well, that, that's true. Yeah, so I, it, the point still stands, though. Yeah, it's been yeah, unfortunate. Yeah, they, they haven't found good use on Exorcism at all. And right now with the Blade Mill on Wraith King, the only time he can feel safe going on Wraith King while the Blade Mill is up is when his Ghost Scepter's up. Because the reflected damage is physical as well. So, uh, can at least be immune to that. Oh. They're looking for Jones again. The Death Prophet even got recalled up here for this, and he's just like, see ya. Just and there's nothing to do. There's no tower to take. There's nothing. You, They went really all in on a clockwork just to not find it. So, Mal's doing everything that they can, but down 14,000 net worth. I mean,. I'm just going to come right out and say it. I think the drafts this game from both sides are pretty terrible. I think they're awkward. Like, there's no clear defined strategy on how to win. 
Uh, team fights are super clunky on both sides. Alliance at least has like a good clean initiation with the clockwork. There's a recall in on Skylark. Speaking of that, they're gonna catch the LC yet again. So initiation definitely is powerful for them. What was this about? Oh, they killed him? No, Wraith King actually. He is uh, going to be jumped right here as he gets, comes back in, but now Death Prophet, but that exorcism throws himself in the air. The Shallow Grave, keeping him alive, gets hit by the Supernova as well, but the Harlot Toggle on top of the heal support from his teammates is going to keep him alive in the long run, so he still has Reincarnate on top of this. Hanskins barely juking and jiving. He finally will go down, but Vidar committed pretty deep for this, and that's going to prove to be a fatal choice for him. So he goes down as well, and Malice once again in retreat. The trap connects. One auto attack, almost kill Spartan Spirits? Io. Spirits? No, he's falling back now. Bring them in, push them out. It's not going to connect though, but EGM stays alive. The best part about this. But yeah, yeah, I don't see how Alliance loses this now. You're up 16,000 gold against a lineup that can't play from behind. The only thing they can do is stall endlessly with Illuminate, and even that doesn't work if Limp can just blink in and Meld Strike and kill you. I think that's, that's proven to be one of the biggest things, is the fact that Lip has just got such a huge start here and is just going to have that full blood thorn here in the near future. You I mean, you see the net worth lead. It's 8,000, 9,000 even net worth higher than the Life Stealer, who's uh, tops on his team, and then that goes down from there, obviously, with Death Prophet and only about 8,400. So. Yeah, he's over double his opposing mid laner right now. There's a, another blade mill. This one on the other side, actually. LC picks one up. Popular item this game. So, the issue with that is as long as Wraith King's nearby, that still doesn't really open up dual potential. That Vampiric R is so huge in keeping TA alive. Uh, Limp is life stealing so much off of every auto. Cuddle. He's roaming around. The idea of the axe for him is it's might in get the one. works, but. Nope, you notice a fan, he gets away. Skylark goes in there with the Infest Bomb. Here comes Dazzle Guess what? Shallow Grave, pretty good against the stool ability. Jonas a fan, hook shot, he missed, unfortunately. Yul throws himself in the air, and that just delays the inevitable. So at least they get a couple of kills, and no Roshan, though, because he's not up. That blinding light actually made Clock miss the hook. Feels bad, but 2200 net worth. It's a chip in the lead, at least. Yeah. They want to wait around for Roshan. I mean, he has to be up soon, they figure. And again, as we can see, he's going to be up in 15 seconds. Yeah, they're not wrong. It's close. It's literally a max, max. well, within, what, 15 seconds of max re respawn? So, yeah. pretty unfortunate. And eventually it's going to pop up here. But, you know, Lions are going to be ready to go, you figure. Clockwork's up in 10. He can TP right here to the shrine. And Loda's already here. Yeah, and Limp can get relocated in, so they may get this Roche, but I'm not wondering if they don't just lose the entire fight on the back end. This is the bottom lane, yeah, they're just pushing Look into the base. Look at he just blinked in. <laughs> Did he back over here, Loda goes in. The Shallow Grave going to keep him alive, in fact. Got to kill an LC already, but Dara's going to go down. He picked up the Aegis right before, though, but it goes down with it. Phoenix also falling. Exorcism off. Back here from Death Prophet as he's just trying to live as long as possible, but they will run him down as well to relocate in. And then they go right back to the bottom lane, of course. The lip's like, oh, hi again, Connell. The blind, though, will allow him to miss. Uh -huh. And they'll stay alive. Lip just BKB'd before and insta killed the Connell. Finish him, finish him. Uh, not going to go for it. Instead, wants that tier three, and he'll get it. And he has all the supporting cast coming in as well. So Death Prophet buys back, but no exorcism. So are they really that scared? Not particularly. You're not healthy, though. They still have Reincarnate. He did, st uh, he did stay alive the whole time. Radiant True. Yeah. Obviously, that's where the heal support is coming to play. It's in the shallow grave. Oh, oh that's a big Wraith Fire Blast. The pressing attack, though, in no return. But the cogs to block a couple of supports. Supernova activated as a result. But TA just shreds right through it. Connor gets picked off. And the duel going out, though. It's actually a winner for Io. <laughs> He ends up winning the duel. Desperation I, at its finest for Mouse. I, uh, yeah. And that should do it. I don't. Loda had too low mana to reincarnate. It, it could have easily dueled Loda and actually gotten a kill there. And a duel win. I, I think this game's done anyway, but. 
Yeah, Maus is in a poor mental state for sure right now. Well, the good news for them is, is again, they're still alive in this event, and uh, they get a the night to think it over into the morning here, and uh, play again tomorrow against what it will be Empire. By no means a easy opponent, but got to refresh because we have seen them play very well with that set. In fact, heal even in the game one of the series, played mm -hmm. pretty good. So, but uh, yeah, Alliance. Whether you want to say it's uh you know maybe Mouse making some poor decisions, but Alliance at the same time you know played well enough to get the victory and. Thus, they're moving on to face yeah. Navi. I mean, in the end, that's all that matters. EG is notorious for playing up to the level of their opponents or down. So it doesn't matter how well you play if you win in the end. So Alliance comes out with the win here and will move on to the winner, winner's semifinal. Yeah. And I believe that's it for today in the EU region. That is. That means we are going to be coming to a conclusion here. Again, our third and final best of three wrapping up here. So hopefully you guys enjoy the European coverage. For those that may have tuned in uh, throughout all of it, definitely had some good matches for today as expected. And like I said, all teams are still alive for those that are fans of any of them. But it's uh, a little more dangerous now for Empire as well as Mouse Sports. As far as Alliance and Na'Vi, they're going to be in that winner bracket and trying to get set up in a good spot in those grand finals of this four-team double elimination matchup here. But it's coming down to a pretty fun finish here for the European qualifiers. And we will continue coverage into tomorrow. Again, the default time continues to be 10 a.m. Eastern or 1600 Central European time. It looks like right now it's scheduled to be Empire versus Navi. No, wait, that's for today. <laughs> uh, the winner bracket final would be first. So it means Alliance versus yeah. Navi, Navi would be first. And then that's to be followed by Empire versus Mouse Sports after that. And then that would be an elimination match there. Of course. So. That it will. All right, Z-Rock, we are wrapping up, though. I want to thank you, as always, for uh, co-casting today. Many shout-outs. Anything else you want to say? I got nothing today. It was fun. I'm tired. <laughs> With I'm you, lay in bed and watch some North American version of this next. Oh, yeah? Got the Summit 7. Yeah, that, that, it's just been crazy. Like, Summit 7 alone is just constantly going. I know China just started here, too, and – all these regions. Southeast Asia isn't even happening because that already took place. Yeah, that's still just so busy with how much is going on. But, uh, yeah, you get the NA. Yeah, and I actually – I think NA started on BTS2 five minutes ago. SG Thunderbirds. Perfect timing. Yeah, should be good. So uh, we'll probably go ahead and host them, and uh, I'll catch you all over there. All right, guys. Well, thanks again for tuning in. And we will be seeing you tomorrow as far as the European coverage. Looking to continuing with that. So, as always, guys, have a good night. I'll break CBK, joined by Z-Rock here. See you tomorrow here for our Summit 7 European qualifying coverage. Have a good night, guys.